the last time uh, you went to the doctor. Maybe the doctor prescribed you a, a medicine, uh, most likely a pill, you know, perhaps it was an injection. So you might be surprised here that the device that you see uh, here on the left is also a prescription medicine. This particular device is a treatment for hand tremors from a condition called essential tremor. And unlike pharmaceuticals, which work by tapping into the chemical or biologic signaling pathways, this therapy works by tapping into the electrical signaling pathways of the body. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today is our moonshot uh, at Cala Health in reimagining electricity as medicine. Our mission at Cala uh, here on the left is to be a leader in the space of non-invasive bioelectronic therapies for the more than 2 billion patients who live with chronic diseases that are targetable in the peripheral nervous system. Cala sits at the intersection of digital biology, digital technology, and uh, digital business with our digital ser services. And we're really fortunate to have a terrific set of investors, uh, including the five strategics you can see on the bottom of this slide that span across these fields. Likewise, uh, our team comes from across the breadth of medicines, technologies, uh, as well as services. So what I'm going to do now is walk through a brief introduction to our first product to market, Calatrio, uh, and the patient-centered care model and integrated digital service model that we uh, built around that uh, to really focus on each individual patient and meeting their needs. So we start with uh, informing patients about their hand tremors. About 7 million Americans live with these hand tremors. They make everyday tasks like eating soup with a spoon, you know, signing a check, as you can see here, drinking a cup of coffee, spreading cream cheese, uh, you know, using computers and phones, turns those tasks into a real challenge. So patients speak with their doctors uh, who fax their prescription directly to Cala. And from there, uh, we actually drop ship uh, each patient's therapy directly to their doorstep. We help them learn how to use the new therapy. And of note, we also leverage the same connected digital infrastructure for running clinical studies, which is a really unique platform for building uh, scaled real world evidence uh, on our therapy. So to use the device, uh, patients wear the device on their wrist. Um, motion sensors on board the device calibrate the therapy uh, for each patient's tremor. So it measures the, the parameters of their tremor. Um, and the, the stimulation on the wrist actually sends a signal to the brain, as you can see in this uh, animation here. It sends it to, to the same location in the brain where deep brain simulators are surgically implanted for the treatment of essential tremor. That's what you can see here on the upper right in the ventral intermediate nucleus. Cala takes a science first approach uh, to innovation. Um, we always have, I'm a neuroscientist and engineer by training. And that includes, you know, investing in academic collaborations to really build deep mechanistic understanding of uh, the, bi the bioelectronic mechanisms behind this work uh, in essential tremor, as well as our broader pipeline of other indications. So coming full circle, uh, this motion data, the same motion data used to calibrate the devices, um, also is used to empower and inform patients. Uh, this objective measurement of physiology both gives patients and, and doctors uh, population level data. This figure here, for example, uh, is from a study uh, that we recently ran. It's the largest study ever run in essential tremor. It was more than 200 patients using therapy twice daily for three months of home use. And this result uh, here shown here is from the, you know, more than 21,000 individual sessions of therapy, looking at the patient's tremor power measured from those motion sensors before and after therapy. This motion data also you know, can provide each patient with insight on their unique uh, physiology and response to therapy. So to wrap up here, uh, by reimagining electricity as a medicine, um, Cala is delivering both better health and better health care. And I uh, just want to say we are so enormously grateful to Startup Health for the community support uh, and partnership in really building out this ecosystem for health moonshots. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Kate. Well, we're thrilled to have you as part of our army of health transformers. A um, few questions here um, coming in hot. Question from an attendee, Ryan Tarzi. Does Cala work for patients with tremors from Parkinson's? Um, and maybe talk about other conditions that you may or may not be able to apply Cala to and your plans for that. Yeah, thanks for the great question. So, uh, um, 
Uh, the first product that we brought to market, Trio, uh, is indicated for the hand tremors associated with essential tremor. Um, we also have uh, uh, shared, we were really pleased to receive breakthrough designation from the Food and Drug Administration uh, for treating uh, Parkinson's uh, as well. Uh, so I'd say there, there's more coming there. It's an area we are deeply passionate uh, to supporting patients with, uh, with Parkinson's patients as well. That's really great to hear. Um, tell us about the history of Cala. How did it get started? Yeah, so uh, it's a, it's a spin-out from uh, um, Stanford University from the biodesign program there. Uh, as a fellow, uh, as a fellow um, uh, in the program, one of the real sort of hallmarks of it is a focused on needs needs driven innovation, which I'm a huge believer in. Uh, so I actually spent several months doing primary sort of immersion in Stanford Hospital and clinics. Uh, essentially, you know, following around any uh, back office billing specialist, nurse surgeon, uh, you know, nurse, uh, home health care practitioner. Uh, and really the belief is in un truly understanding patients' needs and taking sort of a needs first uh, approach to innovation. That's how we came across the insights around how we could, you know, reimagine the fields of implanted stimulators, sort of looking back to the history of cardiac pacemakers and spinal cord stimulators and deep brain stimulators, and likewise pull on some of the pharmaceutical innovation around understanding this class of disorders uh, and really reimagine that sort of with a very different uh, form factor, this, you know, prescription device uh, focus. And then I'd say as well, you know, the, the service model I was just walking through, that's very grounded as well in sort of the, in the theory of really spending first, you know, I think of it as first person research, really spending time with the patients, getting to know their needs and the practice. That was actually what led us, for example, to this very uh, patient centered uh, business model, not knowing that uh, shortly after we launched, we launched in uh, late 2019 uh, in uh, the US and not knowing that, you know, at that time, there was also a pandemic right around the corner where uniquely, you know, throughout uh, COVID-19, we have been able to continue serving patients uh, by being able to ship therapy uh, directly to them and, and, and support them in that journey. So I'm a huge believer in uh, needs-driven innovation. And your, your own background as a neuroscientist and an engineer seems like you were just made to, to invent this, launch this company. So that's always awesome. To <laughs> Um, and to see. A um, few more questions here. Um, can you talk about the current standard of care for essential tremor and related diseases or the other, what are the common treatments? Um, it's this a person asking the question says, my understanding there's some interventions can be pretty invasive. So, it, you know, yeah, great, it's a, it's a great, that. great question. And absolutely. I echo that. Um, I had actually been working in uh, uh, neurosurgery. I'd done a, a postdoctoral fellowship uh, at UCSF in neurosurgery, mostly in the space of deep brain stimulation, gene therapy. Uh, and one of the things that you know really stood out to me about that uh, clinical immersion period, as I was mentioning, was really getting to know essential tremor patients, uh, realizing the several things. Number one is exactly as, as the question is pointing to, there's very little, there, there, needed, there needs to be better therapeutic options for these patients. They basically are presented the choice of either you can get brain surgery or um, you can take medications. The med no medication has ever been brought to market specifically for treating essential tremor. So the first line therapies are propanolol, a beta blocker, more commonly thought of um, as a drug for reducing blood pressure, uh, and primidone, which is an anti-seizure medication. That's what really, you know, I have, I have a background largely in Parkinson's. That was one of the things that really knocked it out of the park for me was just seeing, you know, how impacted these patients were, and yet it had not been a sort of therapeutic uh, area of focus. So we, we were uh, passionate about introducing better therapeutic options for them. You can imagine how gratifying it is to, to hear from the patients. It is, absolutely. That's what brings us into, uh, into work every day. <laughs> right, totally. Um, question here from um, Steve Albanese. He's actually one of our investors who is a clinician in the physical therapy space. So this must be driving his question. Um, other conditions you can apply the technology to such as pain or other movement disorders? Yeah, I, you know, absolutely. We, we look at this as a, uh, as a, as a platform. Um, both on the scientific mechanism as sort of as well as the, the hardware and software we're building out. Um, the company is actively uh, involved in work across uh, numerous indications, both in neurology, uh, psychiatry, and cardiology. 
Um, we partner with uh, leading academic medical centers. We have a, a, a partnership with MGH, for example. Um, we have a couple more we'll be uh, announcing shortly, so stay tuned. Um, but yes, ab ab absolutely, uh, there's more coming there on the pipeline side as well. Great. Um, another question here from an attendee. Um, how big is the market for essential tremor? What age is typical onset? Yeah, so uh, typical onset is, you know, sometime somewhere in sort of people's uh, sort of, I'd say, 40s through 60s, 70s. Um, it is primarily a, a Medicare population in terms of, you know, when people are most actively seeking treatment. What we found is really interesting uh, through our, a lot of our market research is that only a small percent, proportion of these patients are actively uh, seeking care. Um, most are sort of as we think of as, as in the wild. What's been really encouraging in our first uh, 18 months on market has been seeing how effectively we're able to draw patients out who are not actively presenting in a physician's office, as well as, for example, reaching patients through the larger, uh, um, through, through, through our relationship with neurologists, with movement disorder specialists, and particularly the larger centers. And I'm a big, big believer that, you know, that's what healthcare needs, is it needs sort of both the direct patient engagement and draw in, in sort of into the system, uh, um, as well as building and deepening the relationships between the patients uh, and their physicians.